Oh yeah, here's a backup camera just in case. Ooh, my legs are shaking. I know what I'm doing. Yo, so I know it's been about a week and this might be old news, but the last chance qualifier is over and Tim Paulson came out on the top end of the male side of the leaderboard. I don't really want to talk about the fact that he won the last chance qualifier. I want to talk about the fashion in which he won the last chance qualifier. The last time I made a video like this, it was in relation to Patrick Belliner, and I called him king of the refs. But Tim Paulson, after having watched his last chance qualifier videos, I think is very much in contention for the king of the reps title. And I can say that because he put up every single one of his videos for everyone to see, for the world to see on his YouTube channel. Uncut, unedited, probably the exact same videos that he sent into CrossFit, and it's because he is absolutely absolutely nothing to hide. Video by video you'll go through, you'll think that he left no stone unturned, and some of the videos he even had two cameras. I would have to say that if CrossFit wanted to do something that would be of popular opinion for the community, it would be, hey, take Tim Paulson's video and some sort of regurgitation of it to say this is exactly what you guys need to do if you even want to have a chance at qualifying for whatever stage is next. So you know that we've talked about, and I brought up in relation to the Augustine Raquel May video, which of course we then saw the other angle, but the initial video would never never have flown because it was on the other side of the room. It was shot in like 720p. He wasn't even the athlete that was featured in that video. That would have not had been a good submission video. We've seen Brooke Wells 18.4 video, the one with the handstand push-ups, and it was across the room. It was very grainy. And then you go to their Instagram profile and it's shot in 4K. There isn't a single video on the Instagram where it looks crappy. And then the submission video looks like you dusted off the Sony Ericsson. It's like, all right, time for the submission video. I brought up that Talking Elite Fitness video where you've got Dave Eubanks and Adrian Bosman. They're keen to the fact that people are trying to do things that might make it harder for them to review things like the all black. Dave, what does the video review process for the open look like? Man, so I mean, there's a couple layers of it. Ogres have layers. Onions have layers. You get it. We both have layers. You guys know the process. They, you know, video themselves, they send it in. If there's a problem that they see, whether it was filmed on a potato from across the room. I don't know what type of camera they use. It's just something straight out of the 80s. <laughs> or you've got an athlete wearing all black in a dark room with a black painted wall behind them. Or Who would do that? Whatever it is. <laughs> which, which we more see a lot. More than you would think. <laughs> yeah, more than you would think. Or trying to do chest of bar pull-ups with a black t-shirt on. The individual wears wearing all black. And they're wearing all black. We have to assume that they're probably doing it on purpose because we don't believe in coincidences. You guys thought I was fucking crazy talking about the all black. Andrew, I don't know why you keep on bringing up all black. It's because it blurs their ability to judge when it's online. And these are all things that Tim Paulson completely avoided in his submission videos. I say that and I don't know whether or not he was wearing black in any of them. So if there's black in any of these videos, but Andrew, he's wearing black. I don't think I didn't notice it. And if anything, it totally did not blur my ability to tell whether or not he was completing good reps, which he very much was. All right, uh, Tim Paulson, semifinals workout, or no, last chance qualifier, workout one. Uh, clean or, uh, thrusters and bar muscle ups, I know what I'm doing. So in his first video, he shows the weights on either end of the plate. It's like there's a 25, there's a 45, making the bar 185 pounds. He shows the end of the barbell. He does so with a couple of seconds of the camera staying on the numbers. If you don't leave the camera there for a couple of seconds, it makes it damn near impossible for someone sitting behind a computer screen to have any idea what those numbers said. So people will be like, oh, 25, 45, and the plate, and like, all right, here we go. We're doing this workout. You can't do that. You got to be able to show it for a second so that whoever's on the other side of the screen is going to be able to know what the weights were on that bar. I brought that up in relation to Austin Cahoy's quarterfinal win on event number four because he just like kind of brushes over them and there's somewhere the numbers are rubbed off. You don't know what the fuck is on that barbell. And Tim Paulson here shows exactly how you're supposed to show your weights on the first workout. Then when he's doing his thrusters, there's a slight pause at the top of every single repetition. No question about the lockout, no question about the depth of his squat. On the bar muscle-ups, it's interesting. I was having a conversation with somebody about glide kipping. A lot of the CrossFit these days are kind of having a pseudo glide kip and it isn't a glide glide kip because if you know anything about gymnastics maybe i'll plug in a video of the crossfit glide kip where they actually show you what they're looking for the toes come above the bar and that's just like a maneuvering of the body trying to use your body weight to your advantage to get yourself on top of the bar these look very different from what i would imagine crossfit bar muscle ups are looking for where you're just kind of kipping and then you bring yourself around the bar it's more of an uprise so 
Tim Paulson's muscle-ups are entirely within the rules. His toes do not cross the plane of the pull-up bar. And there were other athletes that had more questionable, almost glide-kipping looking type bar muscle-ups. But still, I believe as long as your toes do not cross the plane of the pull-up bar, that CrossFit's going to be giving you those. That kind of also brings me to, is CrossFit looking for like the picture-perfect repetitions or are they just trying to keep you within whatever boundaries they are? Because if they say you're not allowed to glide kip, this kind of looks like a glide kip. Or are they saying if it doesn't look like this, you can't do that. That's abstractivity and you have to figure that they're not going to be going that route. Tim Paulson, great lockout in the top of the bar muscle up, great thrusters. I believe he even paused on one of those repetitions. Nice work. All right, uh, Tim Paulson, last chance qualifier, workout two, 2,000 meter row, max handstand walk. Uh, the password's clean and jerk. I'll say it again later. On event number two, I've already talked about this. He does the 2K row into the handstand walking. He's quick as shit on his hands. He's got extremely flexible shoulders. There's absolutely no wasted time getting up, kicking down, kicking up. His hands always start behind the line. His hands always cross the line. That's rather clear. He goes the extra mile at the end of the workout to show the camera the 2K time that had finished. It was at 638, I believe it was. That's freaking ridiculous. My best 2K ever is 636. And I've mentioned this on somewhere else that I think that this might be the most impressive performance I've seen from an athlete in relation to anything in quite some time. That is because when I rode my 636, it kind of put me into the shitter a little bit. You watch him do a 638 and then handstand walk his ass off and then he can go grab the camera, say the password, which he does at the end of every video. He does a good job of saying the password. It was clean and jerk. And you've got to say those passwords to make sure that you're doing the workouts within the right time domain. You had to have it done by Friday at noon, I believe it was. But he says the password and then he shows his monitor and the whole time he's like, up, 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 up. I just wrote a 2K and I did it at almost Andrew Hiller's PR pace and you have no chance at ever doing anything ever. Tim Paulson's the man. Awesome score right there. Awesome workout. Awesome video submission. CrossFit, take notes. Tell everybody that this is how you want people to do it. All right, uh, Tim Paulson, last chance qualifier, workout three, clean and jerk, shuttle run. Workout number three, it's the shuttle run. He shows you the distance of the shuttle run. He goes down, he's like, all right, make sure that's in the right spot. He tells his buddy, walks across the room, shows the other end of the floor, shows you the weights on the barbell again, does so in a fashion where you can actually read the number shows you at the end of the barbell so you know how heavy that barbell is and then he goes back and forth the clean and jerks you've seen and i know that i've done in the past the clean and jerk where it's like get it the fuck off me and drop it maybe too early before you show a complete extension of the hips and the knees and the shoulders and the elbows so you just do that clean and jerk and you just kind of dump it when you're watching tim paulson do these clean and jerks there's absolutely no doubt that he has control at the top it's as if he's trying to hold the bar for too long which is even in more incredible because he took second on this workout overall time under tensions a bitch and in my opinion I think that he probably worked harder than some of the other athletes in the field because I don't know for sure because I haven't seen everybody's workouts but I can guarantee you that not everybody looked as awesome as his clean and jerks did rep after rep after rep for 55 total reps. I did say somewhere that I did not think that this workout would be done as quick as it was. I thought it would be closer to the time cap. I thought maybe the quickest times would be 16 to 18 and that some people would hit the time cap so I have to tell you that I was wrong there. The athletes are fucking incredible at this point. That was super cool. All right, uh, Tim Paulson, last chance qualifier, workout four. Workout number four, a whole bunch of repetitions. The big thing on this workout was the wall ball target in relation to the Masters semifinal event number five. You may remember that Tommy Tillman's relatives came after me for being all upset that I didn't take into account where he marked the tape on the freaking wall. If you watch that little bit that I put in from Talking Lead Fitness and Adrian Bosman, you'll see that they want you to tape so that the 10 foot mark is here on the wall, right? And Tommy Tillman's relatives had to inform me that he taped on this location. Tommy Tillman had to hit the tape. Tim Paulson shows you the correct way to do it, where you tape at the top of the tape line so that an easy observation from somebody who may be video reviewing, which these videos are going to be video reviewed, shows you that when the center of the ball clears the top of the tape line, it's a good rep. Adrian Bosman, Dave, you makes on the Talking Lee Fitness podcast that I brought up the other day said that it's one of their biggest pet peeves. It's like tape above the line so that we can more easily see. And yet I'm the asshole for pointing out the fact that Tommy Tillman did a whole bunch of repetitions that didn't count and is still going to the CrossFit games because they didn't review those workouts. And Tommy Hackenbrook's athlete got fucked because of it. In the case of Tim Paulson, though, tapes it the correct way, does all of his wall balls to the correct height. You can clearly see that. Center of the ball is getting over the top of the tape line. His squats are below parallel. His chest touches the ground on his burpees. I have never seen double unders that would be kind of fucked up, but there is an opportunity always for anything to go wrong when you've got hundreds of thousands of people 
people doing workouts, but I still haven't seen double unders go wrong. I do remember Dave Castro had to make it clear one year that when you were doing the open workout, which was 35 double unders and nine barbell thrusters, that he didn't want anyone to like put the rope in their pockets or some shit. But still, it's hard to fuck up double unders. And the big thing to take note of here is that even though he was doing hundreds of repetitions, all of them were great. Really no room for error. I would say over the course of the competition, 100% successful on his repetitions. Tim Paulson, I know I've given a hard time in the past for like trying to pump up the whoop and go, you were just kicking your own ass on the rower and you expect us to believe that your heart rate was sitting at 155. And just because I might give you a hard time for trying to promote some product that I think is shitty, I understand that you're probably getting paid, so good for you. And I officially nominate you for being the number one contender for Patrick Vellner as king of the repetitions. And of course, one of the biggest things to note here is that Tim Paulson, other than I believe Whitey put up Chloe Wilson's videos, Maddie Sturt's videos, I think it was Maddie Sturt's videos that Whitey put up. There were no other athletes that put up every single one of their videos, to my knowledge at least. Uh, maybe Nick Matthew, I know Griffin Raleigh released one of his, and I've seen a couple of other ones floating in. And the repetitions look good, but Tim Paulson's are perfect. Get a chance, tell Tim Paulson he's the fucking man. Good luck at the CrossFit Games. Hopefully he's not too beat up from like the competition after the competition leading into the biggest competition. Andrew Hiller out.